Hi guys, good morning. Uh, it is October the 10th, just gone 8 o'clock here in London. Uh, you can see from picture on my right hand side, it's all going to be about, or well, potentially all going to be about, uh, the trade talks today in Washington. The two day, or is it a two day uh, talk between President uh, Trump and Xi? Just before we go into a bit of detail on that, it's worth bringing up the, the charts. And uh, this morning we've had some decent moves already, uh, not uh, to, to go into detail on stocks just yet. You can see how choppy they were overnight. But Euro just coming to an interesting level and worth bringing this in before we go through uh, any points on that. We're just coming to the top end of this trend line, really going back here to, uh, well, if we start it on here on the, on the 13th of August. So here looking at a, a 240 minute chart. Then the next high that we had post ECB, if you remember this, the full reversal, which made a new low of the year to then go higher up to where we made a high for the 13th. We're now back testing that point. Uh, we talked about uh, this resistance level in the briefing for the last few uh, sessions. You can just see here, always struggle to get above. We're now uh, above there. We're testing this trend line uh, up 36 ticks on the day in the session already. So worth keeping a, a close watch on uh, on what happens there. And actually just to and I was looking at the, the trading live chat and Alex, I hope you don't mind me talking through part of your trade here, uh, just on the euro breaking uh, that high. You can see, or you may just be able to see the entry point here to, to go long and, and fading in up towards that top end of the trend line. And here, I imagine this, this line here is, is the high that we had uh, from, from last week as well. So a great trade, waiting for that breakout to, to get in uh, part on the aggressive. I guess uh, maybe some was waiting for the classic or not, but great trade. And, and the euro strong this morning. Uh, so we can see here uh, it's just testing that, that, um, that trend line. I'd be really waiting to see can we get a confirmed close above there at the moment. Uh, it's uh, just testing for, for now. Uh, also, I mean, if we before we go on to today's headlines um, and overnight to an extent, I guess it's worth talking about what a day yesterday was, especially considering it was uh, a dataless day other than the oil inventories at half three. Uh, we obviously came in in the morning and we had uh, this headline. Let me just drag this into picture. Actually, I've got a. Uh, let me just bring this in one second, bear with me. Have it uh, drawn up on paint, of course. Uh, we had the headline in the morning. Uh, new EU ready to make a major concession on consent by allowing a double majority in the uh, Northern Ireland Assembly to leave new Irish backs up after as yet unspecified number of years. This saw the pound strengthen, as you can see, breaking above its pivot, which had been good resistance. Uh, however, that did get... Uh, uh, retracted or denied later on and, and, and price came down and of course yesterday as well you did have the the big drama between Colleen Rooney and Rebecca Vardy which I'm sure everyone was was interested in that was uh, um, a pretty good one a pretty good spat shall we say over Twitter uh, however you know it got a bit more uh, serious overnight and I remember coming in through the door yesterday and I had football training last night and I can never sleep after football training. I think it's the adrenaline is still in my body and I put uh, well, put Twitter up on my phone and in bed and here I'm really sounding like Anthony now, uh, checking, checking Twitter in bed and it was all kicking off um, and so for an hour or so I was just literally refreshing my feed and having a look at the charts to see uh, what was going on. You can see stocks were really topsy-turvy, pushing to the downside quite aggressively on the futures open before reversing back and literally a, a full reversal by, obviously I wasn't awake at this time, thank God, but uh, by 3 a.m. we had full reversed and reasons for this. So uh, just before we actually go through those points, a lot of the, the comments on, on Twitter around midnight and um, 11.30 were just saying how badly you know stocks are going to get killed following these comments we you know pushed higher on on the hopes that there's going to be this great meeting and uh, now uh, our as at that time you can see here just the the big push so this was here 11.15 this is when I really started checking uh, Twitter around 11.15 11.20 so we did get a, a strong move to the downside but you can see that reversal uh, coming back and this is obviously around one and then a push higher to to three o'clock and, and since then no real move no real move a, a, a 10 point zone if you like some of those comments that did 
come through. Uh, so overnight, uh, we had the, the South China Morning Post reported that deputies had made no progress in talks before the principal negotiations, so for, for today. Uh, the paper said uh, Premier uh, Li He would also cut the scheduled talk short by a day. So this really uh, helped ignite the, the push lower that talks were literally just going to be a one-day uh, home early on Friday, uh, and that was it. And then uh, Bloomberg and other media reported that there was no change in the schedule with talks set to continue Friday. So from a trade opportunity, maybe any clarification uh, or confirmation, should we say, that there isn't going to be a Friday talk, we already know we're going to see some downside for that. So that's a little uh, one to keep on the back burner there uh, as well. Uh, Fox Business reported a new that talks would be one day as well. Uh, so if we can get any confirmation of, of all of this, then uh, expect some downside to, to come in. One of the, the positive points that helped uh, rally us or take us back to, to where we were, Bloomberg saying the White House is looking to uh, roll out a previously agreed currency pact with China as part of an early harvest deal that could also see tariff increase uh, next week suspended. So. Uh, you scratch our back, we scratch yours, and looking for some currency stabilization uh, for the dollar yuan uh, and also, therefore, the US scrapping some of that tariff increase for, for next week. This is a positive, um, but we are exactly where we were on the open last night, pretty much. Uh, New York Times saying that Trump administration would soon issue licenses to US companies to supply non-sensitive goods to Huawei, so another good one there. And the Financial Times saying the US is weighing options to crack down on shipments of contraband goods from China, so slightly negative on that. But overall, uh, all things considered, back to where we were. Let's have a quick look at the, the other reactions that we saw. Uh, gold, as you'd expect on the, the one day talks and uh, on the sort of the, the futures open, if you like, pushing higher, pushing higher above 1520, snap back on the more positive and exactly where we are trading. So it uh, looks like it's going to be a pretty interesting day, not to even go through the data uh, yet. The data calendar actually looking like it should be a pretty good one, but certainly these comments are, are looking to come out quite often, you'd imagine now, and especially as uh, once Trump starts waking up, although he was tweeting two hours ago, so a late, late one for, for the Donald. Uh, Euro, of course, uh, pushing on here. A couple of uh, couple of comments this morning or headlines, you know, saying that the, uh, the Euro is pushing higher because of the, the trade talks. And of course, that link between the Euro and the, the, the Chinese Yuan, I guess effectively the, the dollar index, but on the, the Chinese side, the Euro is a, a large weighting of that. So, you know, really positive put moves to the upside for trade talks. You can also get the Euro pushing on. and. Um, one to keep an eye on. So if it was to go negative, then maybe this trend line on that 240, you can see this looks like such a good opportunity to sell. The dollar index is, uh, as you could imagine here, slightly weaker, already down a quarter percent. Quick look over at the pound. You can see at the, uh, the time, the euro push, we did just get above that pivot. Relatively important resistance zone yesterday, just where we found uh, almost a top today. So again, one to keep a, a watch on 122.58, the high of the day on the, the futures or previous high of the day is, as a potential support. And as usual with these these moves, I always like to have trend lines on from those lows, which you can see not that respected, but potentially later on, maybe something to uh, have on as well. With this uh, weaker dollar, gold is just trying to get back above uh, the pivot. So just putting this on, to a five minute chart you can see worth having on even just a little trend like this you can see one two three four five tests of that if we can get a further push in the dollar uh, to the weakness so you're a dollar higher gold you'd expect to to break through this resistance uh, trend line as well so one to to have marked up on the the charts for for the future so those talks taking place uh today are really going to be the uh, the main driver for equities, you would imagine. We do have US CPI, and we'll come on to the Fed minutes in in a second. As, as some of the uh, the the reasoning behind the majority wanting that cut was to do with the the previous CPI number missing uh, expectations. So it will be quite a, an important reading, but with the trade talks today and potentially tomorrow, 
that's really going to be the, the main driver uh, of things. So I like uh, on Bloomberg here, they you know you always do sort of go through the, the key uh, events coming up for, for the week and the day and, and things to look out for. And obviously we do have the ECB minutes to, to come as well. Um, and then the inflation numbers on Thursday. I f would still say there's some other important things to come, but certainly from a, a euro dollar related uh, market, it's going to be all about the trade talks for the dollar and the euro side of things. We've got the ECB minutes and then those inflation numbers on Thursday. So that will really determine where we, we finish the market uh, or not. Moving on to the, the FOMC minutes, a, a good uh, tweet here in, in just uh, clarification really of those those minutes last night very limited reaction as usual as usually is the case here uh, so this tweet here is from, from Michael Brown uh, many cited inflation and com economic risk management and justifying rate cut debate emerging on when to end policy easing officials generally more concerned about risks relating to trade and global economy where have we heard this one before every single uh, central bank meeting it seems labor market and over overall economy readings are strong although i did see an interesting tweet from uh, from someone yesterday saying the unemployment figures in us are skewed uh, and are fake um, let's not talk about their gdp readings uh, i guess uh, also continued a couple of policy makers said rate cut maybe too much insurance others saying uh, factors keeping rates steady clearer picture emerging on weakness in investment um, as well. Interesting remarks, several favoured keeping rates unchanged may make further easing more difficult. The The next meeting, the next Fed meeting on October the 30th, so one, two, just under a three weeks, we'll be doing that live on YouTube uh, as well, covering it. Uh, the day later, Draghi is leaving, the day after that is non-farm payroll, so uh, that week should be pretty, pretty key. Um, and also, actually, I was going to go talk about this later, but considering we're, we're talking about that week there, of course, October the 31st isn't just Draghi's leaving due. Uh, it's also the, well, the current date for uh, when we will leave with a deal or, or no deal. I haven't actually got my phone on me, but I, uh, I got a text from someone, and I'm not going to name names to, to put them in it, and I'm not going to say who sent them uh, the text. Actually, it was an email, but they... Uh, may or may not have had lunch with Stephen Barkley yesterday uh, and he was just confirming that they would be leaving uh, on the October the 31st with or without a deal. They think the press have uh, looked into the consequences of a no deal too harshly and in fact they're getting offered trade deals every single day. Of course he would have to say this um, as well, he's not just going to tell anyone, uh, you know what, actually we're, we're really worried, we have no idea what's going on. Um, and we're getting no trade deals, but uh, yeah, worth uh, worth just looking into that. Just seeing a couple of comments come through now. China foreign foreign ministry, China deplores U.S. smearing China on protests protects of religion and rights. A couple of comments coming through. The pound actually just coming under a bit of uh, weakness, but I did mention that it's a pretty key resistance level from yesterday, so it seems more technical there. And euro just having a, a slight bounce, but back towards those highs. On the subject of oh, sorry, I wasn't. Uh, on the charts there, just talking about the pound resistance level from yesterday and the euro on that trend line as well. So it seems a bit more technical uh, than anything there uh, as well to, to have marked up. Worth, uh, you know, having a, a look while we're talking about the pound and, you know, whether you want to believe those Stephen Barkley comments or not is, is up to you. Um, if they're that confident they're going to leave on the 31st of October without a deal, then yes, there would have to be some more downside priced into the pound, but ultimately six months time, I see us higher than where we are now, uh, to uh, to be honest. So today uh, we have UK PM Johnson meeting with Varadkar, the Irish PM, um, around midday uh, UK time, uh, which, uh, you know, the, 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 the few times they have met, is, nothing's really happened, has it? It's just been, Boris has just been shot down uh, just like most uh, times he speaks to um, you know, people in charge within Europe. So not expecting too much in the way of positivity from that. A um, couple of headlines overnight from the Times and, and confirmed in the Sun. Uh, if I just bring this article in. Brexit latest. No extension without new referendum or election, the EU insists. Uh, and then following on from that, um, 
uh, Corbyn is willing to grant Johnson a general election on November the 26th if uh, Brexit is delayed. So uh, I did a, let me see if I, I did a tweet a couple of, uh, four days ago on uh, if there was a general election and it was confirmed, is the pound a buy or a sell? Holding trade for at least a couple of weeks. So, you know, more just going with what is your, your general view on the, you know, the medium term direction of the pound. And 52%, of course, 52.48 was the result. But 52% saying buy, 48 saying sell. And, and it, it's a, it's a, it really is a tricky one going through that because I guess on the, the buy side, you're, you're getting well if conservatives and also Stephen Barclay was, was saying to this person they really do believe they would, would clean up in a general election. Um, my view is I think they would as well. Um, and so on the general election side of things, you've got a positive uh, idea that they're going to have more sway, more opportunity to get a, a deal through Parliament. The last person to say that, of course, was Theresa May in 2017, and that didn't end too well. But this could be seen as a positive. But also on the, the flip side, if they're going to be more hawkish and you know even favouring a no deal or whatever, then that's kind of got to be a negative as well. And you flip it around to the other side and you know, if Labour were to get through or the Lib Dems were to provide the shock of the century and you know these are you know going down the route of more uh, remain, then the pound has to, to strengthen as well. So I think you know, if that had finished four votes or two votes either way, it would have been 50-50, and I think that's almost fair enough, to, to be honest, uh, looking at that. But today, yeah, midday, you've got, uh, you've got uh, Johnson and meeting, uh, one to, to keep an eye out on as well, and, uh, and these talks of a general election uh, as well to, to come through. November the 26th, the, the rumoured uh, date there as well. Which, hang on. Election on November the 26th. L elections are always on the Thursday, so... I don't quite know why they've said that's a Tuesday. Um, interesting, interesting. We'll look into that. Uh, data calendar-wise, um, you can see yesterday was obviously you know incredibly quiet here. There was just literally hardly anything out. It was just that that crude uh, oil number. And uh, let me just bring in the today's uh, calendar. One second. Let me just open that. Up for the 10th of October. Here we go. Thursday. So yeah, coming into the morning. Actually, the morning is is, is a pretty good one. You got GDP out of uh, the UK. As we know, uh, not expecting too much in the way of movement from these UK numbers with with the Brexit still the main driver. ECB minutes uh, at half twelve. Uh, not expecting too much uh, from that. Um, and then we get into the afternoon. We have the the US CPI numbers, obviously the weekly initial jobless claims uh, as well, and we've all got the uh, the amount of speakers here. Carney at 10.20, and then Fed and ECB speakers making up the, the afternoon post-EU uh, close as well. Those inflation numbers, you can see here the, the straight inflation coming at 1.7, a bit of a miss, hasn't been at 2% since April. Um, that was a miss expected last, I think the con consensus for that was around 1.8, so a slight miss on that. We're now expecting it to rise again to 1.8, uh, so potentially a bit of dollar strength. And it'd be, uh, you know, this could really, um, you know, confirm or, well, let's just get the Fed watch tool up and have a look at October. This could really, you know, sway this uh, quite drastically. So at the moment, we're 82.8% priced in for a cut in October. I saw Anthony on his on his Instagram did a did a poll recently um, saying how many are expected this year and the majority from what I saw anyway I'll get him to confirm uh, were saying they expect two um, and at the moment you can see 82.8 percent but if we were to have a really strong inflation number if you've got certain members citing their reasoning behind uh, the cut in September was because of a poor inflation number well if you get a good one that 82 percent isn't going to be 82 percent much longer and it will come down and, and get closer to that 50 so quite a good potential opportunity there of a good number uh, as well just having a look actually at that dollar again it's just having a further leg down on the dixie which means obviously the euro is now back above that trend line can we get that confirmation push in terms of resistance levels above where we're trading you've got quite a few highs uh, on the 25th uh, that are 
you know, 11090. It's another 30 ticks to the upside. I think that's not out the question, to be honest. Euro has obviously been such a small mover all year with, you know, a, a big day here and there. But, uh, you know, even so, this looks like it's a massive move. It's only 38 ticks. So still quite small. Uh, but a break by that trend line, you should see maybe even a bigger move uh, as well to, to come through uh, on, on that uh, as well. Uh, just having a, a quick run through the, the final bit of that, uh, of that calendar there. You can just see those speakers um, are coming through. But the main points that I would say to, to focus on uh, today, obviously we have the, the numbers out of the UK in the morning, not expecting too much from that. Then we go into to midday, we've got PM uh, Johnson and Varadkar speaking. be interesting to see what uh, comes of that. Into the afternoon, we've got the US numbers, which should be pretty important. We've got the two-day talks in Washington. Is it going to be two-day? Are there going to be uh, the suspension of tariffs next week? All these things will you know, influence where the S&P actually finishes up uh, as well. Any questions as usual, uh, please do let us know. Obviously, be on the mic through, throughout the day and uh, going through some uh, setups uh, as well around midday, which I'll put on uh, to YouTube or, or Twitter or something as well. But I hope you all have a, a good trading day and, uh, and I'll catch you in the chat.